It's time for Breaking Bread with Papa. Hey! Don't you know? Hey! It's our goal. Hey! It's, our goal. hey. it's time for Breaking Bread with Papa. Hey! Don't you know? Hey! It's also a show. Hey! So I give you bread and you come to the podcast. Yeah. That's how it works. <laughs> I How did you trade? Did you enjoy it? Oh, one hundred percent. So we're we're a we're a bread family. You know, we go to we go to Cheesecake Factory, and it's like, don't even order the entree. Just keep giving <laughs> us that basket of bread. <laughs> I, I cannot stop eating that bread, and and we're we're addicted to bread. I'm not gonna lie. When I saw you give that loaf to uh Jamie, Jamie Kaler, my yeah. mouth was watering because it just looked. <laughs> So delicious. It looked like what bread is supposed to look like. It, it looked like he was friends with a baker, not even a fellow comic. He's <laughs> friends with a baker, and I want that loaf of bread. I, I hit Jamie up so fast, and I said, I need that ASAP. I, literally, before I even got home after dropping it off at Jamie's, I got a message. Joe Coy wants the bread. I'm... <laughs> I, I'm sending him your information. I was like, I got, I, 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 I just, I don't have any more loaves. I've got to go. So I, I went home. I started mixing it up. Oh, By the time man. you you contacted me, and I got to say, you're hitting it at the right time though, because during quarantine, I've been home and baking a lot. Oh. And this, uh, this bread. I mean, look, I'm I'm kind of a bread snob to begin with, and I thought I was good a year ago. Yeah. But it's. Uh, not to toot my own horn, but this bread is really off the off the hook at this point. Yeah, my Angie said something like, uh, "It's kind of like a <laughs> so funny." She was <laughs> like, "This is like biblical bread." That's what she said. <laughs> I'm not even joking. I'm gonna get the exact words that she said, but she was like, "This is like biblical bread. Like the bread that they serve now, it's kind of like like for the uh, for mass consumption." This yeah. tastes like the bread that Jesus made in a wooden <laughs> oven. It's very hearty. It's got a lot of wheats and whatever in it. And I'm telling you, it's very flavorful. It's the best, Tom. Well, man, I you know, when you said that you're a bread family, and I saw Angie when I was dropping it off, and your, her eyes were kind of lit up. Yeah. And and your son too. I was like, oh, I've got to, I've got to come back. This isn't enough bread. This <laughs> yeah. is I've got to get more bread. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> You know, I made a sandwich last night with that bread. You really? Oh man, what would you put on it? Cheese. Ooh, cheese melted or just straight? Straight cheese. Oh just man, cheddar right in between it with butter. <laughs> oh, with I'm not butter. Even joking. And I didn't even grill it. It was so good. I'm. This makes you. me so happy. This really yeah. makes me so happy. You have to package this, Tom. You I know. I know. But how do you sell bread? You know. You know what it takes to to make just two loaves is a big deal. Yeah, well, we got to figure it out. We got to figure it out. You're a we good businessman. Yes. Yeah, you have to figure this out. We're going to figure it out for sure. Now, here's a question. Now, first of all, I want to say right off the bat, uh, your new special on Netflix is a treat. Oh, In his you. element, it is. Everybody knows you as a stand-up comic, and everybody knows you as just a personality. But this is a hybrid this is a very cool thing because i thought it was going to be just straight stand-up but you are it's a little anthony bourdain it's a little variety show it's a little you doing your stand-up and you bring the world to the philippines shot the whole thing in the philippines you wanted to shine a light on your culture yeah and it's really really well done congratulations oh uh, thank you uh, you know you said everything that i said in the pitch meeting that's the crazy thing oh really yeah i yeah. literally said anthony i wanted to feel like anthony bourdain with like an entertainment port you know like a little more of the comedy some singing some dancing but then that when we do go into the location piece i i want to experience like anthony bourdain bourdain did i want to yeah eat. i want it shot cinematically beautifully you know what i mean and and that's totally. what that was all about. That's you what really, that was all about. You really pulled it off. Now, here's a question, though. Yeah. Because um, I am the perfect, uh, the perfect viewer for this from an American perspective. Because the Philippines is, is, you know, of course, you're aware of certain parts of it and there's certain parts of, like, the crazy history yeah. with, like, the Marcos and yeah, all right. of that. And that's where it stops. That's yeah. pretty much where it ends. I had a, I had a, I had a Filipino friend when I was in third grade, and we used to hang out and uh, and listen to albums in his bedroom, and 
That's it. That's all my <laughs> Filipino knowledge. <laughs> yeah. So like, so when you, when you start off the special and you'd say that this is, people don't know the Philippines is made up of like 700 and something islands. 7,000, yeah. 7,000 islands. Yeah. 7,000? Yeah. 7,000. See, yeah. I learned it and already forgot it. Yeah. <laughs> That's, I had no clue. No clue. Yeah. And, and they speak 180 languages. Uh, you know what I mean? And, and, and some of them are tri, I'll say trilingual if I could, because they'll speak two different dialects in, 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 uh, in the Philippines and then also speak fluent English. Man, you know? oh man. Yeah, Is it's, there... it's pretty amazing. And like, you know, uh, my son's grandmother, she speaks uh, Ilocano. And the national language is Tagalog. That's the, the one that the majority speaks. Okay. And she flips it back and forth like it's nothing. She'll go Ilocano and then go over to Tagalog. If she's talking to one aunt that speaks Ilocano, she'll speak that. Boom, she's talking Tagalog to someone else that speaks Tagalog. And then she's talking English to me all at the same time. And you're just like, <laughs> Jeez, how is this Louise. possible? Yeah. Is, that, is it similar to, you know, you hear a lot of people talk about uh, speaking Spanish that way, that there's Puerto Rican Spanish, there's Mexican Spanish, there's Spain, there's like, is, is it, and they all have, can't even really understand each other yeah. sometimes. Yeah, I feel like uh, this is like a completely different language. Like sometimes you'll, you'll pick up certain words. Yeah. Like, I mean, uh, you know, Spanish will have certain words and similar words. Uh, Filipino, it, it all of a sudden becomes this other language. Like, it sounds like 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 when she'll speak Ilocano, it sounds like she's speaking Tagalog on an album uh -huh. and then playing it backwards. It's like, <laughs> now it's Ilocano. It's like, Jeez Louise. I, I don't even know how she does it, but it's pretty amazing. Man, oh man. And this is your mom? This is my son's grandma. Your son's grandma. Okay. Yeah. All right. On, and, on, I'm sorry, on, on the mother's side. On the mother's side. Right, yeah, right, yeah. right. And And your mom too? My mom speaks Tagalog. That's it. Tagalog. Okay. Yeah, but the, why like, is she? Why is she so lazy? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Why did I ever use that on my mom? Man. Oh, that's yeah. top and, top uh, and right look, there. Actually, I, I even hesitate to make the joke because your mom is kind of a one of those superhero moms. Yeah. Where? She really is. Yeah, because I mean, your story. Uh, she brings you over and pretty much raises you by herself. Yeah. Right? Yeah. She was pretty much a, a single mom. When was your father in the States or is he? No, my dad was in the States. It was like the minute we landed in Washington, it, it, that's when the, the family structure divided. You know what I mean? Right. My dad moved on and he moved to another state and it was pretty much just my mom. Right. And I always, and I always try to explain to people now, especially like, you know, the, the Filipino Americans now, it was a completely different time for my mom. Like if you could just imagine coming to this country in like the mid seventies, there's no Instagram, there's no Facebook, there's no Twitter. Right. The way my mom would fight Filipino friends is if she was walking somewhere and heard an accent that sounded like her, she'd be like, are you Filipino? So am I, <laughs> let's be friends. Like, you know what I mean? And I, as, as I try and make that funny, but that's literally how it was like, yeah. And that's, you know, there was no Filipino restaurants. So every time my mom would get like these group of Filipinos together, they would rent out the uh, Knights of Columbus Hall at the church. And, and every Sunday after church, we would have like these Filipino gatherings and everyone would bring dishes of Filipino food. And wow. the, kids, the kids would uh, perform. I would dance. My sister would sing. And, and that was our little community, you know. And, and, and where was this? This that was, was in Washington. In Washington. Yeah. Knights of wow. Columbus. Uh, yeah. And uh, why, did, why did she pick Washington? That was where my dad retired. Oh, yeah, okay. He retired there because his family lived there. So that's where he retired. And got gotcha. you. Unfortunately, that's when the split happened, the division of the family happened. Right. And that was also the beginning of divorce. You know, yeah, like, it remember, wasn't. Yeah, it was a big yeah, deal. It was a big deal. And it was all yeah. about uh, get a lawyer and uh, you'll never get, you know, it was just a rough time for a single mom back then. It was, yeah. it was really hard. It's not like it is now. Now it's like, you know, the, they got lawyers that fight for, you know, the, the, the mom. And back then it was hard, man. I, I remember, you know, one of the saddest times is my mom going to a lawyer and she had no idea what it was. She didn't, she thought you could just go to a lawyer and ask for help and then leave. And then I remember my mom was just like, I need help. You know, I'm going through a divorce. I don't know what to do. And then 
he gave her some advice. And then at the end, he was like, that's 400 bucks. And my mom was just like looking at me and she didn't have it. And I remember she wrote a check and then we got in the car and she was just like, I don't know what I'm going to do. I, I don't have any money. <laughs> like, oh my it God. Was the saddest moment. Cause she cried and you know, it's just like, and uh, how old are you at that point? I was, uh, man, that was like 12, 13 ish. You know oh, I mean? so you're like very aware of what's happening. Yeah. 13, yeah. 14. It was, it was, it was, it was a hard time, man. Yeah. It must've been. Now was the Filipino community, was it a large community there? No, it, no. It was very, like I said, so it was just, it was, just a couple of friends that you could find and kind yeah. of cobbled it together. Yeah. Uh, our Christmas, you know, my, <laughs> our Christmases would be just some skinny Filipino guy in a, in a Santa, <laughs> just a beard barely hanging from his face. Oh, 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 oh who wants gifts? Who's been a good boy? Like, <laughs> oh, man. That's the true story, man. Is it really? Yes. Oh, my God. Knights of Columbus. That's where uh, I swear we had so many parties there, man. I, we, we had it on VHS tape and. You know those are bit, those are lost. Uh, over the yeah, years. Like, man, I wish yeah. I could find it. I wish I could find it just so I could post it. And you say that you're dancing at that point. Was this? Oh, yeah. was This this is your break dancing. I, I used to break dance, and I used to. I was the best Michael Jackson impersonator in 1984, 85. <laughs> you, you talk about that in the special. I. It's the truth. I could moonwalk. <laughs> I. You know, I got popular at my high school because I was the only kid that knew how to moonwalk. And I, I remember at a talent show, I moonwalked across the gym floor. Oh man! Ah! <laughs> but literally, I'm like, I, you know, I, 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 that's how I got popular at, at school because I was, I, I moonwalked at a at a talent show across it. I remember everyone just going crazy and uh, running <laughs> up to me. That's how, literally everyone's like, "Oh my God, what's your name?" I'm like, "Joe." What are you? What are you, Filipino? What the hell is that? No one knew what it was. <laughs> oh, they really? <laughs> oh no, no one knew what that was, man. Oh man, were there there were no other Filipino kids in your classes? And, uh, no, no. Really. it's so, kind of like me and my sister. It, it's so crazy, Tom. Like, like when I try and explain the times, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, I know. Now it's like everything's very brown. Now you got you got Filipinos that are in the limelight. Now you got Bruno Mars. You got you know you got yeah. Apple the app. You got Rob Schneider. You got you guys the guy. You got people that you can identify with. They go, oh, yeah. I'm Filipino. Like Bruno Mars is part Filipino. Like it's just Chad Hugo's. Fil- Anyways, yeah. what I'm trying to say is when I was a kid, I didn't have that. And, no. and when I said I was Filipino, there was nothing to associate me with. You know what I mean? And yeah. like any other, if, if I had a Korean friend, he said I was Korean, immediately people were like, I love Korean barbecue. I love blah, blah, blah. Like they would say that. Yeah. I had none of that. So it was always like this identity complex. With it's me. interesting you say that because like I said, the, I had my one friend, Jack, who was, oh, did he go? <laughs> you're, you're sweating from the panic. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> it's God, the it worst. Can never, it can never just go right. You know? I know. I know. I was doing an NPR show, that Wait, Wait show, and uh, in the middle of it, my head, everyone's in this conversation. It's like multiple people, and everyone's being funny, and I just drop. And what? I'm like, <laughs> the panic. The oh, panic. Man. Yes. So, Sorry, Tom. No, it's okay. It's okay. This, we're we're getting through our tech. Um, so when you were when you were talking about being able to not 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 only not having Filipinos around you, but also not seeing them in the culture, not seeing them in movies, not seeing them yeah. other places. It's it's interesting when you say that because, like I say in the beginning, I said in the beginning of the podcast, I knew one Filipino kid. I knew one, yeah. and it was just like oh. So, the, yeah, I mean, I knew he, he looked kind of different, you know, and he was yeah. just like, so, uh, all right, I don't really understand it. And the smells of the food when his mom's making the food when we're listening to the albums, totally different. Uh, yeah. You know what I mean? It was like, yeah. and it's so funny because as a kid, you don't think of it as, as, a, as a kid who's part of the, the dominant thing, the, all the white kids. Yeah. You just, you don't, it does not register that no. you don't, that he didn't be- feel that he belonged because we were just friends and he was just part of, you know, everything. But it's, yeah. but it, it's what I've learned over the recent, t- recent years and kind of what you're describing. It is pretty isolating. Yeah, it is. And it, it's also like, you know, just struggling as a kid that's got, you know, I got, I'm half white as well. You know what I mean? So it's like. I'm struggling with that. And there's, there's my mom's side where I'm like, 
I'm so proud of it as well. You know what I mean? And yeah. People are like, so when people look at me, I got my green eyes, and then they're like, well, well you're you're white, right? And I'm like, no, 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 I'm also I'm Filipino. Oh, well, what's that? And it's like I had nothing. Yeah. You know? and, and 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 you know, one thing I would always get jealous of, Tom, is like I had one of my best friends was Korean. And like he would get compliments about his food all the time. Like everyone was like, oh, I love Korean barbecue. Teachers would be like, oh, tell your mom to get some of that kimchi over here. <laughs> like, and like, and I would sit there going, hey, I'm Filipino. And I was like, yeah, and no one wants anything to do with that. Like, <laughs> like I had to try and sell my food. No one to try my food. No one to yeah. try my food. And it it's... just hurt. Like, like my feelings were hurt. I ate yeah. it every day. It's like, no, it's good. Yeah, it literally says. I think it literally says on Wikipedia when you look up the Philippines, it says yeah. uh, that their cuisine is overshadowed by uh, by Vietnamese and Korean food, but that Water. Philippine, but that Filipino food actually is really good if you know what you're looking for. It's so good because if you think about it, it's it's a fusion. Like we're the first. Like there's a lot of people now today. If you go to restaurants, like they're they're so done with like traditional restaurants that people want a new flavor so now they do a yeah. lot of fusions mm -hmm. there's a lot of fusions now you know there's like korean barbecue hamburgers like what <laughs> when did that start happening yeah, yeah we're just done with korean barbecue so we threw suits we threw it between two buns so, it's like, so, so now everyone's doing fusions but like filipino food has yeah. always been a fusion it's everyone that's ever like basically it's gonna suck that i say this but colonize the philippines right you know, everyone that came there and worked and, and and you know and and uh you know like the chinese they were they were they were there forever and and we have a lot of chinese influence in our food you know we have a lot of noodle dishes our egg roll we call it lumpia and lumpia. it's like they yeah and by the way everything that whoever left their food in our country we made it better just want to let you guys know that <laughs> Chinese so, people left their egg rolls. We made it better. You, know, you, you what's break the your food, we fix it. <laughs> what's the difference between a Chinese egg roll and a Filipino? Ours is crunchier and uh, less less uh, vegetables. It's just it's tasty. I'm telling you right now. I, I you know Jimmy O Yang, good friend of mine. I challenged him. I go. <laughs> I challenge my mom's egg roll to your dad's egg roll, and my mom will win. <laughs> my mom will beat every egg roll in the world. Everyone knows lumpia is the best egg roll. That's hilarious. But it's there's funny no because like oh go ahead. I'm sorry, Tom. No, but there's no way he would give it up because his yeah. his dad made that. Like he grew yeah. up with that. He'll be like, yep. yours is cute, but mine. Yeah, you, yeah. you need an outsider to come and break that tie. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We need a judge. Yeah. His dad actually went on online and actually was like, I'm willing to take that challenge. Like, oh, shit. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, he's, no. He's throwing down. To the end. Um, so when then, you went, um, so when you went to the, went, went to the um, Knights of Columbus and your mom cobbled yeah. together for other Filipinos and they show up with those dishes, yeah. uh, what are they showing up with? Tokino? Oh yeah, that's funny. Uh, you know, we have a lot of Spanish influence too. So yeah. a lot of our food has Spanish influence. So it's like, it's a hybrid between Asian cuisine and Spanish cuisine and they fused it together. And, and we have a lot of dishes from it. We got a lot of soups where we use Spanish, uh, you know, seasonings and, 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 mm -hmm. and vegetables. It's, it's, it's really delicious, but they always would bring pancit, which is, which is our noodle dish. We uh -huh. always had uh, a pancit, which What's I in... cannot eat. I cannot eat anymore. I'm Why? Done. What do you mean? Because it was every fucking weekend <laughs> was pancit. And like, I would get so mad because they would make, because it's very cheap, Tom, to make it. Like a right. bag of noodles is like eight cents. And it's like, oh, we can feed 5,000 people. <laughs> and they would just bring so much pancit and everyone would eat it. And like, you know, when you first try it, like when you try it, you're going to love it. But like, yeah. I can't do it anymore, you man. When someone orders pancit, I'm like, get that shit off this table, man. I can't. Is it a light noodle? Is it like um... It's a very light rice noodle, just very like right. thin and glassy. And then they, they it's cabbage, carrots, celery, you know, a lot of vegetables. It's poor man's food. Yeah, know? yeah, yeah. Yeah, of course. And, uh, and, and it's, it's whatever you got in the kitchen, throw it in the pan. And then, you know, not too much chicken, just enough to let them know there's chicken in there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just chicken what we can afford. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> hey, if you run out of chicken, just add cabbage. So, <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah. there's a, a lot of pancit. My favorite dish is chicken adobo, which is basic, <laughs> Tom. And you would love it if I uh, when I take you out to eat. But it's yeah. just, it's basic. It's garlic, 
onion, soy sauce, and vinegar. And it's the most amazing marination you'll wow. ever have on chicken. It's so good. Really? It's our, it's our national dish. And, and I used to get so jealous because, you know, every, every other ethnicity, they, they have a go-to. You say you're Japanese, people are like, I love sushi. You say you're Chinese, we can't get enough of Chinese food. Filipino, no one knew. And I'm just like, <laughs> you come to my house and I give you adobo, people will talk about it all day. Like, oh my God, can you get some more of that adobo? Like, yeah. So that's why, that's why when I did this, this special, um, I had my aunt cook, my aunt and my sister cook adobo in the special just yeah. so I can say it to the world. Like, right. adobo. And I looked at the camera and I go, this is my favorite dish. And I just, just to say that. Yeah. Say that to 2 million, 3 million people that are watching it. Now they're going to be like at home going, we need to try that. Yeah. Where do and we that, get that? That makes me happy. Yeah. The, that makes the, me happy. Man. Yeah. Well, it's a big deal. I mean, it really it is. is. It's such a, it's such a huge thing that when you're, when your family feeds you, I mean, what's what's crazy from my perspective is growing up Italian, the whole world knows Italian food. Yes. A hundred percent. It's it's what you're known for. It's everybody knows everything. It doesn't matter yep. where you come from. Everybody knows the, at least the basics of Italian food. Yeah. So it's got to be frustrating for you to... It's actually... It's kind of... It's kind of funny in a way that as a, as a kid, you're like, "Hey, I'm Filipino, and and who? Where are they?" And like, you're you're you want to yell out exactly even yeah. what you are. And yeah. now as an adult, when it's now you're like, now I'm going to teach you about the food. This is like a whole yes. process of telling the world of little exactly. Joe Coy, like, "Hey, exactly. <laughs> listen to me." Tom, I do this bit. There's my last special. It was called Coming in Hot. And I do this special about my mom putting my lunch in a Cool Whip container. And, and the basis of that joke is like, it's from the heart. Because yeah. I was always that kid where the other kids had like delicious lunches, you know, just mouth watering <laughs> turkey sandwiches with cheddar and peanut butter and jelly with a Coca Cola. And here I am with a Cool Whip. Here I am with a Cool Whip container filled with rice and mungo beans. And no one wants to fucking trade me. And like, and it's always me selling it. Like, if you just try it, it's really good. It's, it's really delicious. Do you like salt? It's really good. And kids are just eating peanut butter and jelly sounds like, fuck his lunch. <laughs> but what's really cool about that, Joe, is that in the special, I remember that joke, because it's such a funny, it's the the image is so funny. It really resonated with the, your crowd. Like it really, Aww. when you say oh, yeah. mungo beans, like that's no joke. They you were, you were, crazy. you were, yeah, you were not alone with that. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Especially when I said patis. When I go, when the little kid goes, what's that bag of sauce? And I go, patis. I go, it really, it really makes the food taste good. Don't spill it on your shirt. You'll smell like pussy all day. <laughs> I'm telling you, I know, I don't know if this is a G-rated uh, podcast, but I'm telling you, I'm telling you, Tom, the reason why that struck a chord so hard with yeah. that Patisse joke is because Patisse is fermented fish sauce and it's in this <laughs> bottle and it starts to like, like salt starts to form on the cap to the point where you can't even unscrew it because it's so salty <laughs> and fermented and it just, it's you, one little drop, it, it turns your whole dish into salt. <laughs> and 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 your my every mom every Filipino mom goes don't drop it because it'll stink <laughs> like a bomb <laughs> I'm like a bomb don't drop it please my God be careful it's not too much and uh and and and, it, and that patis sauce was never in the cabinet with the other sauces it was never in with soy sauce teriyaki or anything it was underneath the sink next to the dishwashing <laughs> soap. <laughs> That's, I swear to God, go to any Filipino house, it's right next to the dishwashing uh, soap. Because it's so Underneath potent. It's, it's because so potent. It's so bad. It's, it's like Clorox. It's, <laughs> it will refinish your floor. Oh, it's my that God. Bad. That's amazing. So that's that's amazing. When I said it, man. And when I said that, as graphic as I was, that's exactly the attitude. Every kid, like, if you drop it, your, your mom will kill you. If you <laughs> drop that on the rug... Oh, <laughs> smell that. Do you smell that? Uh, so Why is your... you eat in the living room? <laughs> eat on the table, my God. <laughs> so so when you get a little taste of, I can perform and people like me, which yeah. is happening with you dancing in, in high school, uh, are you also funny at this point? Are you... Yeah. You're a funny kid. I was funny. And like, I, I know, Tom, it's going to sound like I'm exaggerating. I think like right around six, seven... Yeah. My mom, I was always the funny kid. And, yeah, and yeah. I knew it because I knew I was making adults laugh. 
Right. You know, and, and, and but you, you know, Filipinos are, they, they love to entertain. So when there's a lot of us, there's a lot of us, you know, like mm-hmm. watch them, watch any documentary on Manny Pacquiao. Any yeah. fight. And, you know, you, you see the other fighter fighting and it's like him, his coach, and like some old grandfather that bought him his first <laughs> pair of gloves on his team. And then you, go to, you go to Manny's family and he's got 60 people in the living room. He's got his coach sleeping in a closet. It's, it's true. And that's literally, that's my family. I have so much. You came to my house like, yeah, just right there alone is proof to that, that it's about family first before anything else. It's yeah. Like, and that's how we are, it, you know. Like, I remember Pacquiao, like, those those things with Pacquiao, like getting up to go train, and it was yep. literally just a sea of people sleeping in his apartment, yeah, in his house. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then he straps you, you on. You open stuff up the closet to grab your jacket, and there's his coach. Oh, I'm still working on the tapes. I'm figuring out how to fight uh, Mayweather. <laughs> and that's really how it is. And, and we're so what was your so, so when you're a little kid and you're in front of all those people, what's your? Would, do you remember what your what, what your go to routine was? Just like doing the accents and acting like you know the, the uh-huh. aunties, you know, always acting like the uncle or the grandfather. Just they would love it. Yeah, you know, I'd knock it out the park. Yeah, you know? yeah, and love it. And uh, <laughs> and I, I fell in love with you know, and I always say this that I, I indirectly fell in love with comedy in the Philippines because I used to watch Filipino variety shows because the military base would censor their their programming so they wouldn't even right. have american commercials i remember me and my sister would look at each other and go man we miss lucky charms commercials like we missed it <laughs> yeah because it's just like you know you miss those things because yeah. the, the commercials on the bases are always about the base exchange and how to wear your uniform and you better not you know when you're uh, captured make sure you weren't you're you're an american yeah like yeah all, yeah it's like all this propaganda shit and I just want to see snap, crackle, pop, you know? <laughs> and, and, and so my sister and I would always flip the channel and watch the Filipino channels because they would have commercials, they would have kids, and, yeah. and, and they would have variety shows. Like, we didn't really understand it, but, like, they would sing, they would dance, they would do comedy, slapstick. So, right, so that was my right. first look into, like, comedy. And, Into, and I right. knew I was funny. So yeah, yeah. that's where and, it all and, came from. And animated. So when do you, so when do you, when do you leave... Washington State. Where'd you first do well, stand no, we up? We left then? the Philippines. We left the Philippines in 1981, and I, that's when I got to uh, uh, Seattle, Washington. That's right. when my dad retired in '81, and that's when my mom and dad divorced. Right. And that's when I just really was kind of like not depressed, but you know, we didn't have any money, and I buried myself in stand up. Like I would literally, like like the V. This is such a hard thing to explain. VHS VHS tapes to to the kids now <laughs> yeah. but you know vhs tape had had three speeds it had ep lp and exp or something yeah. like that which was yeah. extended or something like that and that would get you uh either two hours four hours or six hours of videotape you remember <laughs> that's right depending yeah. on how you would record so <laughs> yeah. i would always go to uh uh xp or whatever it was and i would get like three or four specials on one tape and I would always wait for like HBO to pull out an hour special and I would record it. And I, that's all I would do. I would watch Robin Williams live at the Met, Whoopi oh, Goldberg God. around the world in 18 motherfucking days, uh, Bill Cosby himself, Delirious, Richard Pryor, uh, live on Sunset. Yeah. Uh, it, it was just all of those. And I would literally, I'd watch one, repeat it, watch it again. <laughs> yep. out another, and I would just watch stand up. Is that crazy? Yeah, Is that crazy, crazy that you. I, all the way across the country in New Jersey, total different upbringings, total different thing, watching the same stuff, all those same specials over and over and over again, yes. right? Both of us yes. going, to, going to school on this thing. It's such a cool thing to think. And yeah. then we navigate our way through all these different stuff, which we'll, I want to ask you more about that. But then yeah. we end up in the same place all yeah. these years later, it's such a crazy, crazy, great path. Yeah. It's awesome, man. That, that's I why know. I always say stay on your path. It's a long road. You know, every now and then you'll, you'll run off to the side of the road and there's that, that gravel, that shit that pops your tires every now and then. <laughs> and that's fine. Yeah, Take yeah, yeah. Tire and get back on that road, man. Don't stay there with the gravel. Just no. Stay on that path and, and it'll happen. Yeah, I yeah. I always say that, man. So but, where, you was know, your, it, where was your first set? My first set? My first set was on in, in Las Vegas, but you know, you know what's crazy is, I saw I watched Delirious, and that's when I fell in love with Eddie Murphy. Yeah, it was 1981, 82, and then in 1986, 
he was on, he did the Raw tour. Remember yeah. the Raw tour? Yeah, yeah. And I had to call, did I t- tell you this story already? No, no. Where I took my mom's credit card, because this is before the internet. You had to no. call Ticketmaster. And by the way, Ticketmaster didn't even have its own building. They would be, uh, like, they would lease out, like, an area at, like, the mall. Like, if you had to go to, like, to the department store, and it was upstairs. Right, like, yeah, yeah. Human resources, and that's where you had to pick up your tickets, right? Right, so, right. So I called with my mom's credit card. Mind you, no one knows what a Filipino woman looks, sounds like. So they're not going to argue the fact that this is a, a Filipino woman using the credit card. So I would call, I called and like, I would like to get two tickets to the Eddie Murphy show, please. <laughs> Just two tickets as close, please, as close as possible, please. And got those fucking tickets, man. And no. I, I, I was 15 years old, me and my best friend, William. He didn't want to go because he didn't know what stand-up was. And I'm like, are you kidding me? He's like, Eddie Murphy, the actor? You want to go see him live? What is he going to do? Like, he didn't even understand no what idea. stand-up was. And, uh, and got 10 rows from the stage, man. Paul Mooney opened for him. Wow. And uh, I'm 15 in the Seattle Coliseum, and I've never seen it more packed. Like, I, the, the, the like a rock Sonics, star. The, the Supersonics didn't even get that many people in there. Right. And I remember just looking like, wow, this is amazing. This is what I want to do, man. Wow. Have you that's ever seen crazy. Raw? Have you ever seen Raw? Yeah, yeah. yeah. The one okay, where he's, remember, in, he's like in a black outfit. Yeah. And yeah. remember, it's a red, it, it, when he walks out, it's it's like a red, black silhouette behind a red screen. Right. And yeah. he stands like this, and then it comes up and he walks out. Yeah. That red screen was on stage, and it played a montage of all his highlights. It was a screen, and it, it went on for like three minutes to music, and everyone was cheering. It would be like, it would be Gumby, and then it would be like, yeah. Buckwheat, and then it would be like uh, 48 hours, and just like little one-liners, and, hit, and then it would just start speeding up. It would start speeding up and speeding up and speeding up, and then bam, it turned red, and it was him behind it. Bro, rock star shit. <laughs> yeah, oh my God. Rock star. The people, the, I mean, I've never seen people jump out like they were screaming. <laughs> <laughs> People were running up against the stage. It was just like, you got to remember, this is like 86. Yeah. I can't remember the time, 87. Like, just imagine how how huge mind it blowing. is at this time. Yeah, mind that's blowing. mind and to, blowing. And to see that, just to see uh, that, that, that movie, that montage was just incredible. There's no cable, by the way. There, I think it was HBO was all we had. So, Jeez. you know, this wasn't like easy access. We were seeing something that no one else ever saw. Right, right, know? right. Yeah. Especially me. Like, I'm in love with Eddie and, and I'm just like, no Holy one's shit. yeah no one's holding up their phones and sharing no, that no it's just, one yeah everyone yeah is in that moment man it's amazing the power six of that of anticipation yeah six months of just like waiting for eddie to come i and, literally and, 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 i was looking up uh the Capitol theater in Passaic, new jersey yeah. uh last night because that's where i come from and i was there was this old Capitol theater i was like whatever happened to that and it's since closed down but there was a Bruce Springsteen performance. It used to be, wow. it was a rock, it started as a vaudeville house and then became a rock club, rock theater, The Who, everybody played there. And they were talking about, I think it was like 79 or something, a concert, one concert that Bruce Springsteen performed there. And the impact of that, just through word of mouth, that people still talk about that one show. Wow. I mean, the, the power crazy? behind of pouring so much of yourself into a performance that it could resonate like that without any yeah. other media, like you're saying, without any other thing to spread yeah. it other than just people walking out Nothing. and telling everybody else, yep. Hey, just, you got to check this guy just out. Grassroots. Yeah. Yeah. That and, energy is beautiful, man. And, and you know, I, I'll, I'll jump to this because it's, it's on the subject of these big places, but you know, I want to go back to some other stuff of your, your path along the way, but you're playing those places now. You're playing so, these jumbo rock star arena size places. Crazy. I mean, you're there. You're doing those shows. It's crazy because I remember the first time I met you at the Laugh Factory, and I was working three jobs. I was working three jobs. <laughs> I was I was at Nordstrom Rack. I was cleaning yachts. Uh, so I'm pretty sure when I saw you, it was after cleaning a yacht. I'm pretty sure I had <laughs> mustard all over my chest and uh, and Wells Fargo. Yeah, and I remember seeing you sitting down, and you had an all black outfit on. You told me about how you, you when you travel, you like to just pack my black polo, my black jeans. I don't like to dig for clothes. <laughs> yeah. Just put on my outfit, and get on stage. Yeah. And um, and and I I just remember like saying to myself, man, I wanna I wanna live that life, man. 
like I want to be on the road. You yeah, know I mean? I yeah, know yeah. That was yet? That's and, so crazy. Um, and, and it's, it's crazy. Cra- it's crazy you say that because I, I don't remember you. I always just remember you as being the guy who killed at the Laugh Factory. Like you were. Oh, thank you. I, I mean, you were. You know, I don't remember like you having other jobs. I just remember you as a comic. Yeah. And you were just always killing. You were always really hitting it out of the park. I had no idea at the time that you were, oh. that you were in a, like, cause I came from New York. Broke. So <laughs> yeah, I had no idea you were broke. <laughs> I had no idea you were so sad. You know, that's the cool thing about comedy though, man, because we're so in love with what we're doing. Yeah. That we don't show that we're, 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 we're li- literally living our dream job and we're making people laugh and we're, and the energy that we get back is amazing when people laugh and clap. Yeah. That that's a drug that we can, that no one could sell. Like you can <sighs> never sell the high that we get. It's no, it's that's, that's what's so, so difficult about. Yeah. I was, de- no, I'm sorry. No, I, go that's ahead. why I was like, I may have been depressed. You know, I, I, I was broke. I, I was working three jobs. But when that when I walked through that laugh factory door, I was in heaven, man. And like talking to someone like you, you know what I mean, and and knowing what you were already doing, like I was like, wow. Like, and when I found out that you were opening for Seinfeld, I was just like, wow. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like whoa, that's possible. Like, <laughs> I could do that. Yeah, yeah. And John Lovitz would walk in. Chris Rock would walk in. It's like, dude, you're in heaven right now. Like, yeah. I, I don't have time to be depressed. I'm happy. And, yeah. And and all I did was just stay focused because I knew it was I, I knew my turn would come. Yeah, you know? yeah, and, yeah. But man, and to it, pass it, and to pass the 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 Great Western Forum because you know I lived over there. I lived on that side of town, so I would pass it. I would always right. pass the Great Western Forum, and then, and then boom, here I am. I sold out two of them back to back. Like so it's insane. Crazy. It's so it's crazy, crazy. So what? Where, where did it go from? Where did it go from doing really well on the road to that? Can I tell you just one story though? Yeah. Just one real quick one. I'm sure. sorry. I, when I talk, I talk. I have a lot of coffee. That's why I asked um, you to do the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> but um, Delirious was my everything. I think that one is the one where I broke the tape. Like, yeah. it, it, I rewound it and watched it so many times. Uh, he was the, he was the, the I think, the, the, the most mature teenager ever to do comedy. Right. I don't think you'll ever <laughs> witness something like that again. Yeah. The you know because people seem to forget delirious. It's like you know sometimes you know people are like yeah I like delirious it's a little dirty and I'm like well you know he just turned 21 when he shot that. Oh my god, it's like, so you know, creative. You know, him working on that crap. The kid was 1920. God. He was 1920 years old. Jeez so, Louise. Like, and the, and the the way he commanded that stage and the confidence and just the way he articulated the the way he embodied the the characters the way he became his mom and his aunt bunny and his uncle gus like bro oh at my 21, god 21 are you kidding me ralph cramden ralph cramden yeah that, everything he was just it was so amazing to see him oh my god that he sang the michael jackson song it's yeah. it's just amazing james brown. it's just james brown like <laughs> Like and then you and then you're like he's 21 like yeah. this guy's a genius so anyways, uh, delirious is something I watch all the time and I remember Tom I'm not even lying when I say this I used to always say this I'm going to play that venue I'm going to play that venue I swear to God where was that, that venue, venue. That's, that was uh, that uh, that's Constitutional Hall uh, it's the Dar the right. Dar Constitutional Hall in DC yeah and I and I always wanted to play it. It's like six thousand or something like that. Six thousand seats or something like that. seven thousand seats. Jeez. And uh, and it's just beautiful. It's so beautiful. And yeah. uh, and I, and I have the text. I'll, I'll show you the text. Uh, and I text. I remember I woke up in the middle of the night, and I I went and I I text my manager. I go bucket list gigs, and I need to do this now. And I said, you know, the forum, and I said, uh, uh, the Opera House in Sydney, Australia, and then I said the Philippines, and then I also said, uh. Uh, the Dar Constitutional Hall. I go. It has. I have to play the Dar, and we knocked them all out. And and when I played the Dar, we sold two of them out. No and, man. Uh, yeah, and I I remember the night of the show, I had to find a red jacket, and uh, <laughs> and I went and found a red jacket, and then uh, and then I told the man uh, the manager of the venue, uh, I go. I have to walk out of the same door as uh, Eddie. 
Yeah. Uh, the same door that he walked out on. I have to walk in that door. He goes, yeah, he goes, unfortunately, we, we have to leave that open because that's, you know, that that's actual seating. Like people sit there. Uh-huh. I go, I go, you don't understand, man. I waited almost 40 years for this. <laughs> yeah. I need to walk through that door. Yeah. <laughs> so they sat the seats, put a security guard there and told them that they, they can't go through that until I walked through it. It was the coolest thing what they did for me. That's great. And that door is still there. Tom. Really? Yeah, they 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 renovated the place, but that door is still there. It's I'm telling you, I'm I, it's so eerie. Like I had a videographer, you know, my video guy always comes with me, and he recorded it, and I'm standing next to the same door. Like you, you, we 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 cut it, we spliced it to where Eddie's standing next to it, and then we splice it, and then I'm standing next to that door, <laughs> and I walk out, and I swear, Tom, I'm not making this up. The way I hit that stage and wave to the audience, it, it was like. That was my Eddie Murphy moment. That was my yeah. 40 years right there. Oh man. my God. That's what an achievement. Yeah, it was, it was amazing, man. But that's, back to that, that my, but back to that, that question. I mean, yeah. where where does where does that bucket list what, 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 at what point did that become viable? I think when uh when I did live from Seattle. Right. When I shot live from Seattle, and the minute it aired, Tom, it was over with, man. I like that that Netflix special. Yeah, the first one, the one right. that I paid for. The yeah, one that they said no to, and you went <laughs> and made yourself. <laughs> and, I, and I made it myself and paid for it, and then I I submitted it to Netflix, and they 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 ended up buying it from me. And uh, the minute they aired it, I swear to God, Tom, it was like I literally felt it. It was yeah. over with. Right. I, I knew it. It was over. Like my Instagram. Like I remember. As I was watching it, just kept going blip, 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 like like follows, and and, and then uh, and, uh, and then uh, my tour. I remember my tour was completely sold out. Like literally, it was like a week later, the entire tour was sold out for the rest of the year, and that was in March. So like the rest of the tour was completely sold out. We were wow. literally talking about adding shows because all the other shows sold out. So now we were like talking about adding, and then uh, we decided to go to Hawaii. And when oh. I when we said we were, we were gonna play Blaisdell, Hawaii, uh, we only we were only gonna do two shows, right? Right. A Friday and a Saturday show, and those sold out in minutes, like minutes it sold out. And then the venue goes, "Can you want to add shows to the same night?" And we did, <laughs> and that sold out in minutes. And then they go, "We have a Sunday available. Do you want to add it?" Added it, sold out minutes. And then next <laughs> you know it was Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and. It, it, the internet broke or something. It just and, kept uh, selling immediately. It just kept selling, yeah, it kept selling out. I remember we were refreshing the seat map. Uh, oh my on, god! On on, 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 on Ticketmaster, we kept refreshing it, and it looked like a virus, like outbreak. <laughs> like it was like in, in 24 hours, this is what America is going to look like, and it was just turning red. That's amazing. That's I know that feeling just from looking at this, and you're like, come on, am I? Come on, let's sell out. For it to happen <laughs> like that must have been it just was crazy. Nirvana. It was awesome. Yeah. I mean, there was years where I was just like, am I going to get a break or what? Like, I remember when Netflix said no to me, I looked at my age and I go, should I just quit then? Because I really don't know what I'm doing right now because I'm I'm selling out improvs everywhere and and, and they don't even want to look at me. Like, like, why am I doing this? If I can't even get an hour on Netflix, then why am I doing this? And like, I was depressed, Tom. I was really like, I remember when, uh, we hired the director and, and how much they charge. By the way, they're amazing. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, they're, they're amazing. Uh, but uh, I, I, just, uh, I just remember saying to myself, I cannot believe I have to pay this much money to get this shot. Like, this yeah. sucks, dude. Yeah, I was I'm, like, it's I, a I risk. need my son, man. Yeah, yeah. No, that's big money. That's important stuff at that yeah. point. That's a risk. But, and I'm glad I have the management that I do and the agent that I have because they believed in it. They were like, don't worry, just make it. Just yeah. you be you and let us do the work. We'll get it to Netflix. And, and they did. Thank wow. God. Yeah. And that's, thank God to Netflix. That's laying in the gravel. That's laying in that yeah. side gravel, right? And then popping yeah. up. So how, yeah. so how... By the way, I hit 24,000 tickets sold at the Blazell Arena. It was 12 sold out shows. In, oh, no, 11 sold out shows in a row. And it broke Mariah Carey's record. And then they gave me my own day. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> Your own day for yeah. what? For all? Joe Coy Day in Hawaii. Yeah. In Hawaii. <laughs> November, 20, November 23rd is uh, Joe Coy Day. Oh, my God. So yeah, what? And, so is that is that a Filipino? Uh, it's everything. It's all Like connecting to, like, like, 
that that connection with those people. Yeah, it's crazy. I I mean, I, I want you to come with me to Hawaii one day. It's 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 pretty incredible. Yeah. Oh They're my so, god. They, they love me there, man. And that's oh. why when I shot Coming in Hot, I I had to shoot it in Hawaii because of that. It's like I had to give back to them because they they were the first ones to ever do anything like that for me. Yeah. Oh my god. Thousand people right after the special drop. It was crazy. That's so crazy. I mean, it's such a it you could not pick a better place to be like that's the yeah. city that adopted me. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like Yeah. I, mean, I have a little of that with Cleveland. <laughs> <laughs> and I love them. But you're not going for 2 weeks vacation there. Yeah. That's so funny. That's so funny. <laughs> so when you when you start to at what point in this journey Coming is in hot. is is your mom? No, is your mom starting to feel like, uh, like this was ultimately the right choice? Because I know she was. Oh yeah. Because you you've ta- I've heard you talk before about how she was concerned about you getting like a real job and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. At, at what point did she start to think, okay, he made the right choice? It was after it was after live from Seattle. Because it was that they, late. Yeah. Oh yeah. Are you kidding me? So that whole run when you're you're doing pretty well as a as a comic and you're you're selling yeah. out. Yeah, I was still selling like you know what I mean, venues. I, yeah, you were like maybe, a strong maybe. road oh, act. I was strong. Yeah, yeah, I was strong. Yeah. No, <laughs> you were crazy. strong. But I mean the business it, you were doing like for, for your mother to be to she still wasn't sold until Yeah, I don't think she really understood it. <laughs> wow. She didn't know what it meant. Wow. It was crazy. It, yeah. it, and it wasn't until live from Seattle that that's when, you know, where she was getting hit left and right. Right. Everyone knew who Joe Coy's mom was. Right. Everyone in Vegas knows who Joe Coy's mom is now. And <laughs> yeah. everyone wants a piece. It's to the point where if I turn down some type of thing that, I, you know, I don't have time. I don't have enough room to do it. Yeah. That somehow they book my mom. And I'm like, oh, my God. Are you kidding me? <laughs> so now my mom's going to D.C. and she's going to talk on my behalf? Okay, cool. So <laughs> She really does? Yes, it's so great. Yeah. <laughs> well, yep. she... on behalf of my son and I, we like to thank you for you know enjoying his comedy and. <laughs> it's so amazing. Well, she's such a character in your act. She I mean, is. she's such, and everybody must be carrying on carrying their own version of what she is yeah. in their head, right? Yes. Oh, I love it, man. <laughs> I really do. I love it when when someone that's not Filipino goes Joseph, you know what I mean? Oh, Joseph. <laughs> I love it. It's, it's, it's really cool because they, like, like you said, they, they enjoy the character. It's not yeah. me making fun of my mom's culture, making fun of her. Yeah. They enjoy her character. They love the way she, she runs the house and she's a badass. So yeah, they, yeah. they love that. And they identify with their mom. They always say that, Oh, my mom does the same. Right. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. It really is kind of, it, it really is an interesting thing. It's, the cultures that have a real strong identity, it doesn't matter what it is, it's yeah. they, the similarities are so profound. It, yeah. They always just come together. The mom is always a dominant figure. Yes. Uh, it's, 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 it's always big and chaotic and loud and crazy. Yeah. <laughs> like all, yeah. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it's German, matter. Italian, Filipino, Japanese. Yeah. It, it's all those, those cultures that have that real strong, strong identity. Yeah. The similarities are so so strong. So yeah, now that's so true. So when you when you um, when you travel around now after you've you, I mean this special is going to do it even more because. Yeah. But when you when you travel around, is it, have you have you called the Filipinos out of the woodwork? In, <laughs> like because when you're a kid and you don't have that person to look up to, and now yeah. you are that person, yeah. are. Do you have people of all ages like, hey, yeah. <laughs> do you feel yeah, that? It's, it's, yeah, I, it feels good too because, uh, you know, uh, it's something that I always, always wanted when I was a kid. You yeah. know, I wanted my Filipino superhero so bad, man. <laughs> yeah. and I, I'm telling you, man, I, I stood on that soapbox. The minute I found out that anyone was Filipino, I stood so tall, man. I, was, yeah. I don't know how many times I told everyone that Lou Diamond Phillips was Filipino when I watched La Bamba. <laughs> And I'm not even trying to be funny, Tom. When I found out that Lou Diamond Phillips was Filipino playing Richie Valent, I literally, every chance, I'm like, you know, you know the guy that played La Bamba is Filipino, right? Yeah, just like me. Yeah, he's Filipino. Tia Carrere, Filipino. 
Told <laughs> Carrere, are you kidding me? She's got the Asian eyes. She's Filipino. Yeah. And you had to like really research it, by the way. There was no Google back then. No, so yeah. Like, you had to like research it. Bring Go out a newspaper like, article. Yeah, yeah. You had to find the bio, a real bio. Yeah. Uh, and I told you the story about Rob Schneider, right? When I found oh yeah, but Rob tell Schneider tell tell it again though. You said it on my radio show, but I want people to hear this. When when I was uh, on a date and we went to go watch a movie and it was a Rob Schneider movie and I'm on a date and uh, and literally there was a scene where his dad goes, your mom misses you so much. She made you your favorite dessert, raspberry babinka. And when he said babinka, Tom, <laughs> my mouth, I, I remember looking at the chick uh, that I was with, I was like, he's Filipino. <laughs> Do you know that babinka? I eat babinka. Like, does anyone know what babinka is? It's delicious. Like, literally, I gave two shits about the movie. Now it's all about Rob Schneider. He's Filipino. Yeah. I went crazy. And then I remember driving home that night, and I was and like as happy as I was that he said babinka. Like, babinka <laughs> is on the silver screen. Like, yeah. holy shit. They just said a Filipino word. And, and, and now I got to tell everybody at work what, that Rob said babinka. Yeah. And, then, and, and oh, I got to get my mom to make babinka so they know what the fuck babinka is. <laughs> and, then, uh, and then as I'm driving home and I'm so excited, Tom, yeah. I swear to God, same breath, I go, why did he say raspberry? <laughs> I was so mad that he said raspberry, Tom. Because you don't eat that. And, that's no one eats raspberry babinka that doesn't even exist there's no such thing as raspberry babinka like what the hell like why did they put raspberry i was so pissed this thing ate at me it ate at my soul for years to oh my god whenever that movie came out however long it was before i finally met rob schneider and then now we're good friends right right yeah we made it at the laugh factory and next <laughs> you know we're good friends and he's like hey let's meet for dinner you know that like we we go to dinner right and now is my time tom I my could tell first him. time <laughs> man you know here he is complimenting man i love your comedy man blah blah, blah. i was all yeah, yeah. rob you're the reason why i told him the story i'm like you don't understand man like <laughs> when you said babinka in that movie dude my heart jumped out of my my <laughs> chest I, I remember screaming it to everyone in the theater uh, it was such a proudful moment, man. Like, I was so happy to hear that word come out of your mouth and find out that you're Philip. Oh, thanks, man. Thanks. I go, hey, man, why the <laughs> fuck did you say raspberry? <laughs> Swear to God, Tom. What was his response? Why the fuck <laughs> did you say raspberry? As beautiful as that moment was, man, it was the most, like, you don't understand how proud I was. I couldn't it's wait a, to tell my it's mom. It's a that roller coaster of emotions. <laughs> yeah, but you, bro, why the Fuck, did you see raspberry? That doesn't exist. We don't even have raspberries in Philippines. What are you, what are you doing? And you're not going to, this is what exactly what he told us. Uh, this is what he told me, uh, Tom. He goes, he goes, you don't understand. I didn't want them to say raspberry. I just wanted them to say babinka because I wanted to get like a Filipino word in the script. Right. And the writers, he goes, I just wanted like, like them to say, my mom made a dessert. Here's your favorite babinka. I just wanted them to say babinka. And the writers kept arguing with me that that people that aren't Filipino know. would even know what the hell right. babinka is. Right. They'd be like, what is that? What, I don't know what babinka is. So we argued and argued, and we finally came to the conclusion that if I say raspberry, if, if he says raspberry, they're going to know that it's a dessert. <laughs> it's, so he got to be true. Yeah, he goes, so I, just, <laughs> I was just like, all right, as long as you say babinka, you guys can say raspberry. That's and hilarious. That's how, all right, so now. That, now he that now answer my question. Now here's the question. Yeah. What is babinka? Oh, babinka. Okay. I'll take you, man. Yeah, I'd I'll love take to. You to have it. Yeah, it's just a rice cake, man. It's delicious, man. A rice cake? Yeah, it's just yeah, but there's all kind there's so many different kinds of rice uh babinka. Uh-huh. Uh and I, and I want you to try all of them, but it's basically made with rice and it's okay. a dessert. Is it Yeah. Is it good? It's delicious. Really? It's so good. Is that and the I, top I'm dessert? Get you the best one. Is that the number one it's dessert? One of our, yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot. Halo Halo is our national dessert. That's the one that we hold on a pedestal and, and want to show off to the world. And it's basically just a slushy with like uh, beans and coconut. And, and you know, it's like a poor man's ice cream. You know Ooh, what I mean? Yeah, put, yeah, yeah. You put evaporated milk over shaved ice. You mm -hmm. put like sweet beans and, and coconut and jelly. And that's, Ooh, our, nice. that's our national thing. And, but, uh, but you'll like the babinka, especially because right. you're a especially because you're a bread guy. You're <laughs> now, do you cook? Do you do you can you cook Filipino yeah. food? Oh yeah, I can. Oh, I can cook. Yeah. Oh yeah. So uh, and and during this quarantine, I've gotten so much better. Really? I've become a chef. So uh, yeah. So if I'm coming over to your, your house, if I'm coming over to your house, and you're gonna make yes. me 
dinner? What what what's your go to? What's your what do you what are you I, most proud of? I have created something that no one has ever made in the Philippines. Oh. Thank you. And it's uh it's uh it's baked Filipino. Uh, I don't know why I said Filipino. Baked uh, adobo chicken wings. So I take the chicken wings Ooh. and then I marinate them and I cook it just like you do regular adobo. But uh. then I stick it in the oven and I bake it to a crisp. And then I and then I glaze it again with the adobo sauce and then I bake it again. I'm telling you, done. I posted it on the internet. I posted it on IG. Filipinos are going crazy for it. I, I would have, yeah. It, it makes perfect I'm sense. I'm exaggerating. I'm exaggerating <laughs> no. right now, Tom. I, oh, really? You're <laughs> but, not. But, I, but, I, but it sounds like it. they would. But, no, it, it is amazing. People always ask for it, so it, it's that's what Ooh. I would make for you. you dipping sauce, it. dipping. Oh yeah. Yep. In the what? Double dipping sauce. Oh, you dip the wing in the sauce. In the sauce, yeah. yeah. I put it on the side. For you. On the side. With a scoop of rice right next to it, you'll oh, love it. Oh man! So oh good. man! We are doing this. Yes, we that, are. That is right up my alley. That is right up my alley. Right up, yeah. I'm telling you, you would kill in the Philippines, Tom. As you a would crush, man. The as a bread baker go, or as a comedian? Come. As a bread baker. As <laughs> <laughs> in the Philippines, man. Yeah, I, I know. I that was kind of... A lot of, uh, of my friends. That's what was so interesting about your, your new special. It, you... Yeah. There was no... There was no, I, I can tell because I've done these specials. I can, you can tell when you have to do like tricky editing. This is your, their response to your yeah. jokes is just like you were doing it in oh, LA. Yeah, that's because, and I think I've told you, can you hear me, Tom? Yep. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think I told you earlier about, I think on your radio show that Instagram and Facebook has fused these cultures together. You know, yeah. there's Filipinos that speak English in the Philippines and they are hip to our culture in America. Yeah, and, and they're getting it. They're watching us. They watch us in real time. Yeah, and they get it. They get the nuances. They get the the timing is there. They they understand the 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 different words that we use. They get it. They understand it. So yeah, in that the first timing is perfect. You know, that, what I mean? there's no delay, and it's in your first set. There was some you you said something, and I was like, whoa, they got that. Like there was I forget <laughs> what the word was, but it was like it's it was a very American uh, take yeah. on something. And they were right yeah. there. They were like right. Yeah, it's yeah. Wham. It's, it's amazing. It's amazing how uh, this world is a lot closer than we think, Tom. Yeah. You know. Yeah. It's it's not it's not how we were when we were kids. It, no. It's, it's it's we are close now. Yeah. It's 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 a lot tighter now. Man. Oh man. So yeah, and, and, and you would you would kill out there. Honestly, every time I bring somebody to the Philippines with me, yeah, they always beg to go back. They just they cannot believe it. They're just like. I had no idea. And that's what I wanted with the special Tom. Yeah. I want it to be that. I want I want people to know that the that you know there's people that speak English that not the, the entire country speaks English and, and mm -hmm. they get it and and you'll enjoy it. The food, the culture. Uh, if you're an entertainer, you can go there and entertain. You don't have to be scared. They're gonna yeah. get it, they're gonna love it. Yeah. So, and it seems yeah, like man. it seems like from from the little reading I was able to do on the on the the history of it, it seems like this is they're kind of emerging as a democracy. They, it seems like yeah. the like the the young people. It seems like there's an energy and a hopefulness to the yeah. whole country. Yeah, that's true. It is, and you'll see it when you go there. You're you're going to see a lot of. Uh, it, it's not the separation of classes like it used to be when I lived there. When I lived there, it was big government and then the poor, you right? Know? And then of course the entertainers in between, and it was like there was no middle. Yeah, there was no there was no middle class, and you saw it, man. You saw the. The kids cleaning themselves in the street, you know what I mean, with a bucket, and 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 then next thing you know, you you see a mansion, wow. you know, yeah, and, and, yeah. And, 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 and but now there's a middle class now. Now right. there's condo. Now there's condo living. Now there's apartment living. You know what yeah, I mean? There's, yeah. There's there's a there's a nice divide now, and, and and these kids are waking up now. You know the so great. The younger are teaching the older now, and yeah, it's cool. And yeah, it's really really cool, man. And and all right, this is what and, we're gonna... and there's ways of making money on the internet now. So now there's another way of making money instead of always depending on foreign currency, right? Which is what they did in the past. You know, right. their, their number one uh, for the, their economy was based on foreign currency. You know, their parents going to another country and working and sending the money back. Uh, that's that's how they were. You know, and and we're all like that. Like my mom did it. My mom sent so much money back. We would send goods back. It was, Jeez, you know, it's called, yeah. it's called balak bayan. Balak bayan is a big giant box, and you filled it up with as much as you can because 
you get a certain amount, you know, for, for I'll make up a number right now, but yeah. for 200 bucks, you can send 75 pounds worth of stuff. And we would pack that thing, <laughs> canned foods, chocolate, slippers, blah, blah, blah. Wow. And you send it to your, your family and they open it like, you know, it's Jeez. like Christmas. Like, yeah. Oh yes. And, and so that, that's part of our culture. And that's Amazing. another reason for that show that that special, like, I knew how hard it was for me to get into Netflix. And, mm -hmm. and now that I'm here, I got the door slightly open. Now let's go. Come on. They're, they're going to look at a couple more Filipinos. Get in here. Yeah. 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 No. And all those other entertainers that you have on the special and stuff. I mean, it's, it's, I mean, look, I just got turned on to the special and I've known you a long time. We've been friends for yeah. a long time and it really took this special to kind of like open up my eyes to exactly where you came from. I, it was an wow. abstract idea. And, but then to actually see it is really, it's going to have an effect. Yeah. It's going to have a real profound effect. Thank you. Yeah. Great job. Really, really. That means a lot, man. I appreciate you saying those words. Uh, yeah. No, I, yeah. It, I, I mean it a hundred percent. And I listen, I will, uh, like I said in the beginning, I dropped off a of bread and I didn't realize how much you guys love bread there. Oh, I, we I love I'm bringing you, I'll bring you some more. You promise? I, I promise. <laughs> we gotta figure out the packaging of this. I know. This is, this is, a, this is hand in glove. Yeah. The perfect pod for it. Yeah. And, and, and uh, I mean, unfortunately, due to this, what, what's going on, we, we can't sit down and actually break bread. We'll do it. We'll uh, do one of those. But, but when we do, uh, it's gonna oh, be Oh, think about that. My bread, your wings. Mm. Oh, done. Done. <laughs> I'm bringing you babinka. <laughs> You're the best, Joko. I really... I love you. I, I love you, too. Thanks for doing this, and uh, I'll talk to you real soon. Thank you, boss. All right, love buddy. You, Tom. See ya. Bye.